Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. This weekend's special collection is for the St. Vincent de Paul Ministry. Thank you for your generosity. Please turn off all electronic devices. This Mass is being offered for all of us and our families, and especially for Vicki Williams, Dorothy Eatman, Diane Leonard, Scott Conray Harper, Sam Briglio, O'Neill Williams, Jack Colada, Judge Patrick M. Schott, Pierre F. LePayer Sr., Joan Schott, Marilyn and Joe Allen, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony L. Zapardo, Anthony E. Zapardo, Dr. and Mrs. Carl Puccino, Sarah Champagne, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Monks, Mary Ross Berridge, Randy Einstein, Troy Mueller, Robert Cruzanis, and full healing of Phyllis Shantan, also full healing of baby Weldon Romeyer. Also, we have special intentions of the Canizaro family. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn, number 640, Bring Forth the Kingdom, number 640 in your red gather hymnal.
living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Now, let me sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled, Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. As a boy, I liked to play outside in the dirt. No surprise, I think most boys do. When I was old enough, I liked to dig holes. And if I was feeling particularly adventurous, I would uh, dig a hole and cover it with sticks over the top and some pine needles and leaves. And imagine the imaginary a bad guy, you know, coming to the hole and falling in. You know, I, I would win. Um, when I was reading today's parable, this is kind of the idea I had that Jesus was setting up this trap, this parable for the chief priests and elders to fall into, right? But Jesus doesn't um, do this maliciously. He doesn't desire to cause them harm or say, hey, I got you. No, Jesus desires to have them acknowledge and recognize their faults, their own sinful ways, and to realize that he is God, to turn truly back to God. 
He used a similar parable last week where he tells this parable and says, which son really did the will of the father, right, last week? And this week he says, you know, he gives this story about the landowners and he says, well, what do you think? Hoping they can recognize themselves because he loves them. We read in the book of Ezekiel that uh, God says the Israelites were running away from God, turning their back on him during the Babylonian exile. And the Lord says through the prophet Ezekiel, he says, say to the people that our offenses and our sins are weighing us down. They are wasting away because of our sin. How can we live in the midst of our sin? The Lord says to Ezekiel, go and tell the people, I, the Lord, take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they may turn from their wicked ways and live. He says, turn, turn from your evil ways. So Jesus is setting up this parable saying, turn, turn back to me. And he does. He describes this landowner who has the land and sends his servants to harvest, reap the harvest from the land. And the tenants there, they kill the servants. And then he sends his son, which is kind of a twist. Because if he's killed all the servants, why would he send his son? So it, it, it would even draw their attention even more. But they killed the son too. And Jesus says, well, what do you think should happen? And it's not the first time we see this questioning with a parable or a story. I think back of the prophet Nathan when he questioned King David. King David, we all knew, uh, saw Bathsheba uh, and wanted her for his wife. So what he did is took her as his wife and he had her husband, Uriah, killed in battle. He sent him to the front lines and said, leave him there, have him killed. Well, the prophet Nathan knows this through God's intervention. And God sends Nathan to David and says, tell him this story. Nathan tells the story of two men, a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had many sheep and cows. The poor man had only one that he loved like a child. And a traveler came to town. Nathan um, says that the rich man took the poor man's one calf and slaughtered that for the traveler. And David, King David says, he's outraged, he says, this man must die, he must repay fourfold. And Nathan says, David, that man is you. You took Uriah's wife. But unlike the elders in today's parable, David says, you're right. I've sinned against the Lord and repents. He is successful, Nathan, in turning David back to the Lord. So I think as we look at these two stories, this parable, the question for us is, when we're called out in our sin, when we realize we're sinning, the Lord puts something on our heart. Are we like David and say, we have sinned against the Lord? Do we turn back, ask for forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation? Or are we stubborn and hardened of heart, like the scribes and the chief priests and the elders? Furthermore, like the elders who were not producing fruit in the vineyard that God had given them, are you and I, are we producing fruit in our lives? The Lord has given us so much to to, 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 and he expects return on that, right? He wants us to produce fruit. And I think some of the vineyards that we have are, um, first and foremost, are the sacraments. Are we taking advantage of the tremendous amount of grace, the sacrament of reconciliation and penance? Are we taking advantage of the tremendous amount of grace that we receive from the Eucharist each Sunday? Do we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the Lord in the Word and in the sacrament? Do we take advantage of daily Mass when we can? Are we wasting the fruit of the sacraments? I think a couple other areas are the fruit, the vineyards of our families. Right? Parents are given a particular task to get your children to heaven. And don't worry, you're not alone because the Lord has assigned me, all of you, as my spiritual children. I'll have to answer one day when I see him, when I meet him. But likewise, are you working to get your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, anyone, to heaven? And finally, I think the, the, the third vineyard where we have to produce fruit is the world, right? Our workplaces, our, our friends, um, our the coworkers, our, our school schoolmates, our friends at school, are we uh, looking for opportunities to engage them, to share the good news with Jesus, of Jesus with them? In any way that we can, we don't shove it down their throats, but we give it to them in a way that they can receive it. So as we celebrate Mass today, we ask for the grace to recognize our sin and the grace to turn back to our Lord, but also to be fruitful um, tenants of the land.
to, to bear fruit, a fruit that will last for all of eternity. Together we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things physical and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God is the God, God is the God, true God is the true God, the God of our being, the consecration. Trusting in God's providence, we offer him the following prayers. For respect for the dignity of all life, from conception to natural death, as we celebrate Respect Life Month this October, and for the guidance of the Holy Spirit at the Worldwide Catholic Church Synod, which takes place in Rome this month, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For Pope Francis's prayer intention for the month of October, for the Church, that she may adopt listening and dialogue as a lifestyle at every level, and allow herself to be guided by the Holy Spirit towards the peripheries of the world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, we will be spared damage to life and property during this hurricane season, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For the people of China, Cuba, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nicaragua, and Ukraine, as they struggle in the face of persecution and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord for healing of all who are sick or suffering physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord for vocations to priesthood and religious life, especially from our parish, and for the strengthening of marriages, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our deceased loved ones, especially for the recently deceased Gilbert Nikan Jr. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We now pause to add our intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Please join in saying our family prayer on the inside of the front cover of the gathered hymnal, and then following that prayer, we'll recite a Hail Mary for peace in Ukraine and for the cause of life and godly values in our nation. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our hearts and justice have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Christ. The times of war and disaster have been in us. We come to you to call out the very other hand, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom, that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless the parents that they may follow their children and they may Bless and protect our youth and that they may be these things on our part. We give consolation to those who are blessed by us, to find Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this to Christ, our Lord, our Lady of Prom Suffering, 
hasten to help us. Malandra, pray for us. We may be known. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, blessed is the fruit of God in Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Join in singing our offertory hymn number 168, Above All, number 168, in your Buddha Spirit and Song. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And though, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with beautiful service, graciously complete the sanctified work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of 
mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. especially 
with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind remittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand on my word, but only say. 
let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. This Wednesday's Evening Faith Formation Series features a Spanish Dominican named Bartolome de las Casas, uh, whose father was a partner of Christopher Columbus. Uh, this is a story of conversion and justice in the new world. Uh, the pre-ordered meal is served at 6 p.m. if ordered by 4 p.m. the Monday before, and the video is 6.30 p.m. all in St. Joseph Hall. That man is you, Walk With Purpose, both continue regularly as scheduled this week. Our fall Bible study starts this week in the Parish Center on Mondays and Thursdays. Call the office to sign up. Next weekend, the Fatima Rosary March will be on the front steps of the church and along Mentory Road. Uh, that's on Saturday. And note that it, it's at 11 a.m., not noon. Last year was at noon. So it'll be 11 a.m. this year, uh, one hour earlier. Uh, lunch will follow in St. Joe the Fall, and I'll invite you to that. The Daughters of Isabella Lunch and Open Fashion Show and the Men's Club Bourbon Raffle are coming up fast, so see the little different details. There are only 22 tickets remaining for the patron party. Now, the patron party, if you didn't know, is at my house for the gala. It's at the rectory. Father Joe and I are hosting the patron party. And also, uh, gala tickets are on sale. That'll be on November 11th, so you want to get your tickets for that. Eighth through 12th graders are invited to CYO uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the gym after the 6 p.m. Uh, mass for uh, prayer, sports, and just social time. Finally, it's hospitality weekend. If you didn't smell the coffee, I know I did. Uh, so please join us after mass for refreshments and fellowship. And have a blessed week. You may stand for the final blessing of this message. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael of the Archangel, us in God. Be our protection against the wickedness of the spirit of the May God be with you and come to prayer. And do thou, the Prince of Heaven, the host, by the power of God, cast into hell of Satan. And all the evil spirits, the crowd of the world, seeking the souls. Please join in singing our closing hymn number 221 in your Blue Spirit and Songbook. Number 221, We Be Lord. <laughs> Amen, Lord.